Yeah, it's a long time I haven't gone live, guys. Forgive me. I'm really, really sorry. So for those of you, hi, Linstead. For those of you just joining us, we're going to be doing an interview about right. career swapping. Career swapping. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to hear me now? Okay. All right. We're about to go Studio live. live. GIS is about to go live. <laughs> Terry Carell is already live. Okay, ma'am. So I was saying that GIS is going to go live in a few. Terry Carell is already live, up and running. <laughs> We're going to talk about career swapping today. Keep talking. Oh, I'm hearing myself now. She has a story that I love. I love her. Okay, you can go ahead. Hi, guys. This is the studio life. I guess getting the levels. I've never seen so many people in the in the studio like that before. Thanks for having me, JIS. Thank you. <laughs> That's me. Terry Carell Reed, representing St. Catherine. Yes! <laughs> Vanessa! Where's your mom? Where's your mom? Portmore, St. Catherine. Portmore, Shimon, though. 27 years. Yeah. When Portmore show. was just Portmore. When this Portmore was so, just so starting. Cool. Yeah. Can I come in the shot? Can I come in the shot? Of course you can come in the shot. Absolutely. Say hi to Insta family when you pass. Hello, hello. They're side. like interaction. Let me just turn this off. Because you're talking. And you're not hearing me? Yes. Yes, no? Okay. Uh, oh, the, the, the mm -hmm. strap. Okay. Sound better now? Sound better? Thank you. Vanessa, the other side is good. Her, the other side for her is good. You're not seeing the other one. Oh, you want me to speak? Okay, hi. Terry Carell Reed, JS, Studio 58A. Don't you just love technology? Yes. From France. Um, Comment ça va? Je ne parle pas le français. Comment ça va? Bienvenue for the persons coming in from France. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Cheese. If you're Spanish, bienvenida. French, bienvenue. Portuguese, bienvenida. Do you know any other languages? No, unfortunately. Uh, ni hao, if it's Chinese. Yeah. Mandarin. And like German? Uh, German. Uh, escapes me right now. I learned it, but I've forgotten it. Ça va bien? Ah, that's lovely. Hi, Ray. Ray, aren't you at work? Or are you on vacation, Ray? How come you're watching this stream, Ray? And if you're Jamaican, Wagwan, where on the pan? Tu t'appelles Chesney. Ah, je m'appelle Terry Carell. We're ready? Okay. Oh, it's, it's, okay. Okay. Ready? All right. So we're gonna just do the pre-talk. The pre-talk, all right. The instrumental, the swag instrumental. No, yeah, problem. Okay. Make sure you talk loud so they can hear you too. You know because the boy right. will hear ask you. Ask them. Just ask them. Can you guys hear Anjui? Can you hear me? Can and you guys hear the interviewer? Her name is Anjui. Definitely. I yes. know my mo big. Yeah, man. I'm hearing. I'm hearing. Thank you for the compliments on my lipstick. I appreciate it. Jamaicans, all Jamaican. Yes, they can hear you. Fabulous. Ready? She's the only one who okay. can hear the jingle. I was looking, Not so I was looking for it though on my phone. No, until we go live. Until we oh. go live, it's going to pop up. When we go live, it's pop up. Okay. All right. All right, we're schooling now, my little crew. Um, um, um. 
Di sekolah anda orang Malaysia kata? Saya sekolah di orang Malaysia kata Biasa lanjut, no problem um, I was trying to do some conversation with her Welcome to our discussion, Studio 58A Live, here at the Jamaica Information Service. I'm your host, and Joey James Soyes. Thanks to everyone for joining us for today's program, whether it's live on our guest's feed today, as well as the JIS Facebook page. As you watch, remember to send in your questions and comments so we can put them to our guests and share this video with a friend. No persons decide to change their career for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Today's guest loves animals and had her sights set on becoming an animal doctor, but she ended up on a different career path. Now, media personality Dr. Terry Carell Reed will be sharing why and how she changed her mm -hmm. career, what to consider when changing your career, and how to become an MC. Thanks for stopping by, Terry Carell. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me, JIS. Thank you, InstaFam. Thank you, everyone who is tuning in from wherever it is you're tuning in from. We're very, very happy to have you No, today. thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to jump right in. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about career swapping, and I want to know why you changed your career. Um, well, I, uh, some people, as you were saying earlier in your intro, some people have the the ability or i would say the luxury of choosing to change their career some people start midway and they realize maybe this is not for me they find something else that is their passion and they decide to switch careers but for a lot of us we have our hearts set out on uh, achieving a particular career and life happens you get the grade you get the the masters you get the degree whatever it is you do you come out in the hopes that you'll actually start to work in that career or that industry and then life just kind of tells you no so in my case i didn't choose to i went got a scholarship went to cuba studied veterinary medicine learned it in spanish exams in spanish books in spanish came home despite the challenges there went to the veterinary board with my mom she accompanied me today and they just looked at me and said well you know welcome home we're so happy to hear that you've completed your studies uh, when my documents and everything and they said but we do not accredit students who study veterinary medicine in Cuba what do you mean I've wanted to be a veterinarian since I was four at one point in time I had 26 animals in my house stray animals that I collected thank God for my mother I wrote to the governor general at the age of eight saying I was going to be a veterinarian and I'm going to start my you know shelter for animals like I did all of that and now all of a sudden the one thing that I've been working for, for all my life, the door literally just went boom. And I asked, well, where do I go from here? And they said, well, you could go to Trinidad and Tobago, um, the UA campus down there, St. Augustine. Okay. You can do more years there, or you could go to Alabama, to Tuskegee University. They have a very good veterinary program. We have very good relationships with Jamaica. And I'm like, so am I getting a scholarship? Because I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. I come back as a broke student will I get assistance? And they were like, well, we can't really guarantee that. And I remember going out into the parking lot and my mother looked at me with tears in her eyes and she said, what are you going to do? You only studied the sciences. No POA, POB or other subjects that you could probably, you know, cushion you. And I looked at her that day and I said, mom, I have absolutely no idea where my life is going to take me, but I know I am going to be all right. That was why I started my career swap. Not because I wanted to, but because life is uncertain and doors will slam in your face and you just have to create opportunities for yourself. Okay, so what happened next? So what happened next? Um, I started to, to actually um, volunteer at Phoenix Veterinary Clinic because I didn't know where I was going, what to do. I didn't know what I was going to put on my resume. I didn't have any experience. You know, what do you do? The only place I could go was a familiar place, which was Phoenix, where I was going there, you know, just to kind of keep up with what the knowledge, you know, the knowledge I had about veterinary medicine. And then I would get a phone call. I got a phone call from a gentleman who I happened to have been an ambassador for his charity product in 2005. And this is why I always tell students, it is so important for you to not just be what it is you're studying. 
you have to be so much more. You have to hone different skills and different crafts and put them on display at all times. Because what would be my first jump into life, as you will, is because somebody, while I was, you know, just being an ambassador at a particular charity golf event, I was assisting people doing, you know, customer service. I was just being me. And what they saw was someone with the ability to be a good person in public relations. So when I got the call saying, would you be, you know, open to doing public relations? I never even know what public relations is. <laughs> All I know is veterinary medicine. And I was like, I, I don't know what public relations is. I don't have any experience in that. So are you sure? And they said, well, you, look, you seem to be very good at time management. You seem to be able to communicate very well. You're a good public speaker. You seem to get along with persons regardless of where, you, you know, where they're at. And I said, okay. And I, I just dived in without understanding anything, but understanding this was an opportunity. Clearly, there was something that people saw in me to get this opportunity. And I took that opportunity and I ran with it. And literally, each time I met persons, they said, well, have you ever thought of trying media? No. We think you should try media. Oh? Okay. You ever tried TV? No. We think you should try TV. Okay. So all of the opportunities that I've gotten have been uncertain. Mm -hmm. But my mindset is very, I'm going to take it. I'm going to learn. I'm going to train myself. I'm going to soak it all up. And I'm going to deliver. That's just my, my mindset. Okay. So, I mean... What happened to you could easily be seen as a professional setback. Easily. But then at the same time, persons were, you know, hinting, you know, there may be an opportunity somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So what was it that happened that made you say, okay, maybe I can try this media thing? I think what it is, is the difference between a fixed mindset and a flexible mindset. A lot of us, whether it is cultural, whether it is societal, whether it is from our family, we're taught, go in, get the grade, get the, the the profession that you're supposed to get. When you get that profession and you get in, or everything is just going to go quite fine. You're going to dedicate your time and your talent to this particular employer. You're going to stay there for 40 years and you will retire in that career. You are basically defined by that which you study in your career. If you book up on a mistake or if you fail, people with fixed mindsets crash. They fall into depression. They take it very hard on themselves and they bounce back. It takes them a very long time to bounce back because they had themselves always in control of a situation that we do not have any control over. I think when people have a flexible mindset, meaning you are open, you understand you do not control anything else but your talents, how you choose to upgrade yourself, how you choose to hone crafts or learn skills, you have control over that. So whether or not life hits you or knock you down, if you have a flexible mindset, you'll be able to say, all right, that clearly wasn't the path for me. So I'm going to go dust off myself and I'm going to try something else without fear of failure and how people are going to look at me and what they're going to think about me if I do not actually pursue the career I was set out to, to pursue in the first place. Okay. All right. So how exactly did the transition from public relation mm -hmm. to TV host? <laughs> I want to tell you, and that's why it's so important for you to be surrounded by people who know more than you. I think it's important to be surrounded by people who have an eye. When you surround yourself with people who don't have a clue where they're going, it's hard for them to help you, to help guide you. And a lot of my opportunities came, and I'm not going to consider them coincidence. I'm going to call it being surrounded by people who are in a better position to notice a gift that I had. So after I did public relations for maybe about two years, Mr. Mickey Horton James from Spartan calls me up. Terry Carroll are looking for a general manager. So I said, well, if I know anybody looking for the general manager work, I will definitely send them your way. <laughs> I clearly, I didn't realize that what he was doing was saying, you know, asking, would you be interested? Okay. So he said, no, I'm interested in, in sitting down and having this conversation. So I said, um, but I'm not a general manager. I know nothing about general management. And he said, yeah, but when you were a Miss Jamaica World and after you left, you know, you were no longer a queen, we saw you as a chaperone. You were then a pageant director. 
and we saw how you manage time, manage people, multitask, dealt with the media, put together sponsorship packages. He said, if that is not general management, then I don't know what is. Mm. And so he said, I would like to know if you'd be interested in taking on general manager role at Spartan Health Club. Did you take it? Well, you know what the flexible mindset person <laughs> does. The flexible mindset person goes, okay. The issue is that a lot of us are sitting down on skills that we do not realize oh, are yeah. skills. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are overlooking things, thinking it's just a part of us. So we take it for granted. And it's other people who realize we have skills that could be revenue. And so those skills that I thought were just me being me, he saw that as skills that would help with the general management. And as I got in, it required customer service, fixing problems, okay. finding the solution for people, mm -hmm. and then using the communication that I learned from public relations mm -hmm. to communicate with the customers as well as the trainers at Spartan Health Club. So sometimes titles frighten us. Don't make titles frighten you. It's understanding the role and jumping in that role. And that's what I literally did. Nadine Sutherland booked me at Spartan Health Club and said, Terry Carell, you're looking for a host for BBC Rising Stars. And I said, okay, cool. Oh, what are you doing with me? You know, like everything. Like, what, um, <laughs> would you like me to put up flyers here, you know, telling people if they want to go and host, they should go audition. And she said, no, I think you should. And I said, no, I said, I'm not interested. I said, no, I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm fine because, again, we're taught once you get the job, you hold on the job and you don't look around, you don't look anywhere else. And the final day, Nadine Sutherland came back to me and she said, at least go. She said, just go. You don't know what going to happen. Just, she said, just go. And I went with everyone else, drew a number like everybody else. I sat down there from the afternoon straight into the evening like everyone else, went in, auditioned, went right back to Spartan Health Club to do more work. And then I found out I was chosen as one of the five who would do each, um, who would do a particular location. And that year I still wouldn't get it because I withdrew from the, the competition, the auditions. I told them I, I can't because at the time we were doing Mystery Maker World, we were now looking at sponsorship with the competitor. And so it was now very crazy. How do we you know, speak with the competitor as a sponsor of Mystery Maker World when there's a possibility I could now be the, the face of a talent show under the title of Digicel. And so I decided to put my personal opportunity on the back to do the to present the, the general management work, which was at the time also being the pageant director for Mystery Maker World. Okay. But them say, what is for you? Care and for you. So even though I withdrew that year, guess what happened the year after? They came back and said, would you be interested in hosting? At this time, it wasn't auditions. They were saying, we choose you. And I was like, I have no knowledge of media and live TV and production. And I said, sure. Because that is what the person with the flexible mindset does. We, we take on challenges. We go into the unknown, sink or swim, and we learn to swim okay was the media fraternity supportive of uh, your entry they were in fact it was like um i remember when i was mystery maker world in 2005 and i used to do you know one different event um interviews i had to you know be in different interviews and i remember interviewers always asked me you know you you're not interested in media and i was like no and it was simon crosskill who always said you're not going to be a vet he said you're going to be in media Okay, you're going to be a media vet. And he said that from the beginning of my reign all the way down to the end. So I think the media fraternity were looking at me like, you finally pick what you're supposed to be mm, doing. Okay. Um, and what I'll say is that even though I'm the talent and I am on set and people see me as the face, I'm a colleague and the cameraman, the sound man, the light man, the stage man, every man and woman who comes in and is a part of the production team, they help me to learn. They help me to be a better person. And I think when you respect people and what they bring to the team, they respect you back. So it's nothing but love um, with the with anybody who I work in the production team or our family. That's nice. I love that. Love that. Just respect people. 
just respect people and their craft. It's not about you. So even though people people will message me and say they want to be on TV, they want to be the host, I let them know it's not about you. It's also about the team that you work with and you putting out as much as they put in. And then you get a great production. That makes sense. At what point did the transfer of the skills really sink in though? I think it's it sank in um, the night of um, the first night that I'm now going to host as you know I'm on TV this is live this is do or die if you muck your toe all of Jamaica is going to see mm -hmm. um, if you, sneeze. you know if, if you sneeze if you belch you know you don't know what's going to happen and I remember just you know praying in the wings and saying well Lord I don't think you're going to bring me this far and I don't think you're going to give me these opportunities without equipping me. I don't think you're going to put me in these spaces and places in this particular time to have me fail and have me fail in such a big way. And I said, you know what? If you put me here, you put me here for a reason. And I just went out on that stage, read the prompter. And when I closed off, the feedback afterwards was welcome. We're happy to have you. And that validation kind of made me say, well, this is not so bad after all. <laughs> so sometimes you have to put yourself out there. You have to take the risk to realize, oh, we could have been a long time. But maybe you just have to be in your season learning different things before your season now open up for you to take on this new aspect of a career. That makes sense. Now you're in media and the world of media allows you to, prov to provide different professional services. Yes. Tell us more about those experiences or opportunities. Right. So what I tell people all the time, even yesterday, I had the opportunity of being a, a guest speaker at an education grant program. 200 students were there, all tertiary level. And, you know, a lot of the questions that they have is surrounding career. And I keep on telling them when you deliver well, you operate in excellence. You are exceptional at what you're doing. You are a student of life and you're constantly learning, unlearning and relearning. Usually what happens when you start to deliver, to deliver in your space is that people start to realize other gifts that you have. So here it is, I do TV and I think, okay, so I'm doing the live TV and I'm doing the general management. What more do I, well, good, you're comfortable. But then you can be a multi-potentialite. There's nothing in this world telling you you can't do three million things as long as you're doing all of them at a very high level. So then somebody comes and says, I'm having an event. We would love for you to host. What do you know about host event? I know about company TV, read prompter, tell everybody good night. No, you want me to like host your event? The flexible mindset says, all right. Took on the challenge. You do a one in the event. You say, okay, good night. And you go back to your work. But then somebody in the audience who was there now reaches out and says, I was in the audience when you hosted. We have an event coming up. Would you be? In? And you say, you, sh you sure? And then you say, all right. And then when you start to operate in excellence, mm -hmm. you start to look at your clients personalize your service understanding it's not cookie cutter for each event it's not cookie cutter for each client i started to carve out my space doing events which is again something that i never thought of but it was a spin-off of what i had now started to do in media so you can't be comfortable or complacent or think this is it it's just the beginning mm -hmm. it just depends on how far you want to take it so now I host events, if it's in Spanish or my clients are Spanish, I host in Spanish and English. If I have a client that is Chinese, like I had that last week, I learn at least four, five, six words that I can now integrate in English and Chinese. And that is what I've been known in the space for doing, personalizing the service for the client. Okay. Tell me more about the, the attire. <laughs> Because um, based on my research, mm -hmm. I noticed that you embody the, the colors of the brand. Absolutely. Brands. And I've also told persons that even when you are hosting or you're being a media entity or whoever you are, you have a personal brand. You have to be very careful about who it is you choose to align with, what events you choose and what events you decline. Understand that even as a host, you are putting, you're aligning your image 
your brand with this event and you are now going to be the face and voice of that client for the next three hours, four hours, depending on how long it is. If I have committed to be your event host, I will now embody what your company is about from brand colors to what is the dress attire. If it's black tie, I'm going to go in black tie. If it's cocktail, I'm going to go in cocktail. You do not have to worry about me as a host showing up in jeans for an event that is, is cocktail. Mm -hmm. I do my research and I will go as far as knowing what the weather is like. Give you a perfect example. A hotel was breaking ground um, in Falmouth. Of course, the prime minister is usually the keynote speaker for things like that. Mm -hmm. The morning I got up, I put on this beautiful dress. It had flowers because the client or the persons who were investing, the investors, were Jamaican. So even things like that, I started to think about. Let me wear this dress. It had flowers. It looked very islandy. And then I went in the mirror and I literally do things like this. People will never know, but now that you're asking me about attire, I do a 360 turn. I drop a pen. If I drop a pen and it is difficult for me to bend down without being exposed, my dress is too short. Okay. If I bend down and, you know, I have to now fix my attire, my, my attire is too tight. And I said, no, this dress is a little bit too short. It was A-line. And I said, I can't get away with it, but I think maybe it's a bit too short. Then I decided to check the weather. The weather said it would be very windy. So I said, an A-line dress with wind by the seaside, I might now have to, my dress is going to kick up. I'm now going to have to hold it down. And that's going to distract or detract from my presentation. I changed to wide leg pants, a blazer. And best believe when we showed up at that event, the tents, everything was literally flying off or flying away because the wind was so heavy. And I said, Lord, this is why you have to look beyond what the role is. You have to be proactive think ahead, mm -hmm. predict, and then adjust accordingly. So for me, hosting is not just looking pretty. It's taking everything into account, whether your client is super conservative or liberal, wearing your shoulders out, going too backless, plunging neckline. Can you get away with those things in different spaces? Ask yourself the question before you do it. Okay, that makes sense. Don't take it for granted at all. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna um, get into some more tips, mm -hmm. but I want to just backtrack a little bit mm -hmm. because you also ventured into marketing. Mm -hmm. So many things, <laughs> so, <laughs> so many things. And if you speak to the wrong person, or if you speak to somebody who's very traditional or very old school, they will tell persons who do a lot in a diff in a lot of spaces. They'll say you're confused, or they'll label you as trying everything or you're a jack of all trades but you're a master of none because they do not yet understand the concept of being a multi-potentialite so after i had my daughter i stayed at home with her for like 10 months and after 10 months she was over breastfeeding i was over breastfeeding <laughs> and i was like okay i need to get back out into the workforce because i can't i can't stay at home too long and i remember going on to caribbeanjobs.com and just kind of searching. I put in my keywords for jobs that would interest me. At this time, remember, I have veterinary medicine under my belt. Public have experience now in public relations and I did general management. Mm -hmm. So I see something that stands out and they're looking for like a brand manager. Mark you, I do not know what a brand manager is more than somebody who manages a brand. But I do not know the principles of brand management. May never go school for that. Right. Set up my resume, looked at it, and I said, well, I don't know if it's going to be good enough, but this is the first time I'm now going to go and approach for a job. The others, I was approached. So I said, all right. I get a call from the Greener Company. Girl called me and said, we are in receipt of your resume, and we would like to interview you. I tell her, listen, I never I never applied to no Greener Company. You know, I, I think you have the wrong number, and I hung up. The reason why I hung up is because in CaribbeanJobs.com and in these different places, some companies do not use their company email address. No, I didn't know this. Remember, some use generic address, email addresses. Some use agencies. Agencies act on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So I had absolutely no idea it was a blind email. So the lady called back and was like, Terry Carell Reed, we are in receipt of your resume 
for the role of I thought I was being scammed. I swear to God, I thought I was being scammed. And I was going to hang up again. And then I say, I say, what's your email address? X, Y, Z. And she said, yes, we did not use the company's email address. And we would like to know how soon we could. And I say, okay. No, I said, my to God, when I hung up, I said, the cleaner company, the cleaner company, top, top, top of the top. Who me go manage the brand or the green gl- gl- online mm-hmm. of the cleaner? Then I said, well, you won't know unless you, you try. You try. And that's why I keep on telling people, just try. If it don't work out, I know nothing. Keep it moving. Went in for the interview. Did my first round. Told them thank you. Stepped out. Didn't think I was getting the job. Didn't think too hard on it. Got a phone call saying, we would like a second interview with you, but we would now like you to make a presentation for this interview. And I said, Okay. okay, okay, this now required critical thinking, which is not something people can teach you. This is you now understanding the company that you are trying to get into. What are the shortcomings? What are they doing well? What are the things that they're not doing well? You are a consumer. How do you view the company? How is the computer company viewed by other people? And I put together my package based on my own critical thinking. Did the second set of interviews then had an interview with the managing director and then I was told, we would like you. And the, like, let's say I had the interview the 17th of December, on the 19th of December, I walked into the cleaner company as their online brand manager, kid you not. And that is where marketing and branding and understanding all of these other concepts and principles, I've literally learned everything that I know on the job without any formal education or training in those areas. Okay. Wow, it's Eric. I'm like Amazing. all over the <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> I love it though. Better on yourself. It. It's a different culture, mindset, of you know? Of course. But it's also saying bet on yourself. We put ourselves in these little holes, in these little places that people tell us that we must stay in. And a lot of the times we look at other people, we admire other people and we say, gosh, we wish we could be like yes. those other people. The only thing that is different between those people and you is that they're betting on themselves. So what I did was each time an opportunity came, I bet on me. I bet on me and I hold myself accountable. If you fail, it isn't because you didn't try. If you fail, it's not because you never put your all into it. If you fail, it's because maybe, whether it's your passion or not, it is not the door for you. But maybe in that season, you learn something that you're not going to use at another space in another time. Yes, that's very, very profound. Yes. So we want to show some love, Terry, to, to our audience. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have Arroyo A. Banks. He's in the UK. Hey, Arroyo. Shaquille Smith. Hi, guys, and thank you for watching. Okay, Arroyo says, keeping it real. Terry Carell, thank always you. an inspiration. Thank you, Arroyo. Thank you for watching and thank you for encouraging. <laughs> Carrie Ann says, hi, sweet Terry. Hi! Okay, all right. I don't know if my Insta family is asking. Um, so, Terry, can, you can check and see if you have any questions. I'm seeing people from Trinidad, from France. Um, people are saying that some people are saying they're going to step out of their comfort zone and be more adventurous. Um, people say that great show. Um, they love what we're talking about. Real talk. Um, thank you. And that this is motivating. Love that. The phone is very far from me, so I can't really see all the messages. Okay. Okay, we have a question. Terry what question? What's the name of the person again? Shaqueen. Okay, how do you manage family and everything else? Okay, time management. It's extremely important. So people see me doing a lot of things all the time, and this is probably one of the biggest um, questions I get because people who follow me on social media also see me doing projects with my daughter, dropping off my daughter, being at extracurricular with her, doing homework, doing spelling bee, and everything else in between, and they go, how? It's very simple. We make time for the things that we deem important. I have my priority list. A lot of the time, we do not get things done because we are distracted by a lot of other things. 
Your phone tells you your screen activity. Your phone will tell you, boy, you know, you spent 11 hours on your phone today, of which nine hours was dedicated to social media. And you kind of said, nine hours? You know how much I can do in nine hours? Mm -hmm. So for people like me who manage our time and we do a lot, it seems remarkable when really what is happening is that people are underutilizing their time. That's really what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I get up every morning. I have my priority list. I know what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it, and how it is I'm going to manage my time across these different things. If anything is going to distract, detract, or take away my time from those things, I can't deal with you right now. You get put down at the, the bottom of the totem pole. I can't. You can't come up and get involved with where my client is, where my child is, where my family is. There is no space for that. And so because I have done that, you also have to be able to say no. So even though I do a lot of things, I have mastered the art of saying no. How do you say no? I say no by saying, and, and by the way, for people who might have gotten this email, it isn't that I just said it because, but sometimes you burn out yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to know when to step back and say, I need a breather. And so I will say, thank you so very much for the kind consideration. Thank you for inviting me to attend this event or to host this event or to speak at this event. However, at this particular point in time, I am not able to because I might know three days from now, I have crazy events lined up. I have to be able to say no. There are times I'm invited to host an event and that clashes with my daughter's recital. Thank you so very much for the kind consideration. But at this moment, in this time, her recital is more important than mine. I mean, I'm not going to tell the client that. But right now, I have this doing. And most clients follow me on social media and then they go, okay, we totally understand. I have to balance it. Mm -hmm. I can't make the money, give my child everything. And then at the end of the day, she turned around and she said, but she made me you know, have everything and I did everything, but I didn't have the bond and the support and the love. So I have to make sure as a career mom that I balance the no's and the yeses. Okay, we have another question. Mm -hmm. Go again, please, producer. Okay, Psycho Henry. His name is Psycho Henry? I said, wait, wait, two words or? Oh, side dash co. Okay, great. Still Psycho. Okay, so the person is asking that cycle with uh, several skills, mm -hmm. how do you move from a particular career to another and then back to the career you're coming from? How do you do it? Yes. I don't understand. As in, as in, there's nothing, start, as in, so let's say, for example, I started in general management. Is that what we're saying? And I go right. into media go into something and else. I go back to and general then, management. Yes, how do you make that transition back to... to oh, I think the transition management. should be easier, actually. I think the transition should be easier simply because you've experienced so much more. So, for example, Terry Curl at 37 now, if I went back to general management, there's so much I've learned and I have under my belt that now when I go back into general management, I am now looking at it with, with different um, lens and a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think we should stop worrying more about how do we transition and ask yourself, what am I now bringing to the table when I transition? Mm -hmm. I think we put a lot of emphasis um, sometimes in the wrong areas. Wait, that transition back to... Oh, sometimes oh, we put... My apologies. So sorry. sometimes we put our emphasis on the wrong areas. So I think no, don't ask how. You already know. You already know. Fix up that resume. Put put the things now where you've added value, the skills that you have now learned, and now when you go into the next transition, which is to go back to corporate or go back to whatever, you now say, hey, I have so much more that I can offer you as an asset. Let me show you how. Okay. So it's more the value that you need to show rather than the how do I transition. Okay. Okay. So, yes, I'm, I'm in now. I'm in. So I understand. Greetings from Jerusalem. Wow! Hi, Jeru. Wow, Ronnie from Jerusalem. Hi, Ronnie. Thank you for tuning in. Wow, Ronnie says I love your input about priorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's important. A lot of us give a lot of our time 
to people and things that don't deserve our time or energy or our effort so start targeting the things figuring out your goals start strategizing how am i going to get this goal and what are the things that are potentially stopping me from getting to that goal once you identify those things garbage keep it moving okay we have somebody from Paris as well. Paris! Bienvenue! <laughs> Comment ça va? Okay. We also have a comment from Dwayne Gordon. Mm. Hey, Terry. Hi, Dwayne. I always admire you as a strong black woman. Thank you. Keep doing the great work. We love you. Awesome job. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you. There's more. There's more? Okay. <laughs> Never knew you had a PhD. Oh my gosh, you motivate me so much as a Jamaican. Thank you. So a lot of people don't actually know my um my past as a doctor. And I think it's because those who knew knew and they would acknowledge me as such. Uh, for those who didn't, I didn't force them to say, I'm a doctor. Mm -hmm. It didn't really matter. It didn't change things for me. It didn't change conversations. So now when people find out, you know, I say, yeah, I, yeah, I did that. I did that, but it's fine because I'm not defined necessarily by the titles that I have. It's more, how do I make you feel when you come into contact with me? Mm -hmm. That's really what's important to me. That makes sense. All right, so I want to give some more love, Terry. Okay, okay, more love. Greetings from Panama, okay. Let's Panama, como esta? Mi abuela de Panama, bienvenida. Sí, bienvenida, bienvenida. My grandma is Panamanian. Good, 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 great. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. All right, let's move on to. She's like so. going through. She's trying to go through the, the 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 questions. Hi guys, I can't see if you guys have any questions because I'm oh, a little bit far from. Let my, me see if I can. A lot of them are just saying motivational. I, um, too. love you. A lot of a lot of um encouraging okay. encouraging words. Yes, yes. My biggest inspiration. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yes, not. Any Somebody says you should go back to doctoring. Okay. Um, all right. So in regards to that, um, I'll probably ask the person why they think I should. Because, um, again, a lot of the times we start off on a path thinking that this is what our passion is. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people find things that they love and they're good at. And it's their little niche and they're comfortable and they're enjoying it. And so I don't... I don't think right now I'm interested in going back to vet med, as weird as that sounds. Um, I think I love where I am now. Doesn't mean that I might not consider it later on, but certainly I don't think it's necessarily a matter of should go back. I think people should only go back if they truly want to go back. Okay. All right. So we have Royness. Let me see if I can do this now. The Spanish is rusty. But, Roines, mm -hmm. good life. Okay. I, all right, you lost sure. it? Yes. I don't know if it... Do I need speech class to be as articulate as you? So this person, Roines, I'll mm -hmm. just go with Roines. Roines says, greetings, Sarah from Panama. Hi, Panama. I have Estonia here too. Somebody from Estonia. Wow. That's insane. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's it for now from my end. Why did I choose VET? When am I going to do my own show? When am I going to start my own business? Well, okay, Insta fam. I chose veterinary medicine because I've always had a very soft spot for vulnerables, I think. Um, whether it's children, women, the elderly, and I think animals, um, persons or, or things, um, animals. I just always grew up in a household with pets, mm -hmm. always loved them. Whenever they got um, sick, I didn't have a problem with going and making sure I fixed the wound. Um, and animals can teach you just a lot. And I, I've always said that if you meet someone who's mean to animals or mean to people who are vulnerable, really, we can't be friends. And so I chose veterinary medicine out of a love for animals and um, just the, the complete loyal and love that they have for their owners. And that's what got me in, interested in veterinary medicine. I still love animals okay. to this day. Okay. I can see how, how that would work with what you're doing now because you have skills with animals. Correct. But then you can translate that to people. So. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Don't be a hard stop. When it comes to you and your skills, don't think that this is what I can do and it doesn't go further than this. Our skills are transferable. 
And if you don't have a skill that's transferable, get one. Learn one. Read. This is something that I didn't get to say. I'm a voracious reader. Mm -hmm. Read. I find that people don't read enough. They rely on these little bite-sized information here and there. Little thing on Twitter. They may watch a little YouTube video. If the video go over a minute, they can't bother sit down. They can't bother learn. They can't bother assimilate information. If you don't read, you are not in a position to know what's out there. How the industry is changing. How the world is changing. Will your skills still have validity four years from now? You're not going to know if you're not reading. Mm -hmm. So there are people who are running down skills right now that in by 2050, robots are going to be doing it. Artificial intelligence is at a rise. Mm -hmm. But if you're not reading about the industries and finding out, okay, what are the skills that you know companies are going to be looking for now for 2050 up, then you're wasting your time. So I suggest to people, read. Read to find out where the industry is going and how you can fit yourself into that changing world. Okay. So how do you fit that in now? The reading that is. So the reading, um, one, I like to read memoirs because I like to see how people got to their um their success. A lot of us fantasize about the success people have and we don't respect the process. We don't take the time to realize that these people go through a lot to get where they are. So I love memoirs. Then I like books read um written by futurists. These are people who have taken the time out to tell us They've imparted their knowledge to tell us by 2050, these are the skills that are going to be necessary. So right now, it's very possible that you may see Terry Curl graduating in two years in ICT or agro-processing. And I don't care how that might look or sound to people. Mm -hmm. You may see Terry Curl in your class at heart learning agro-processing because I know that people need food regardless of how the world changes, and that that is going to be a skill that is probably necessary. I will learn languages because languages connect people all over the world. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's not forensic science, but you have to broaden the knowledge that you have or you'll only be limited by what you know. Mm -hmm. And if you're limited by what you know, you'll never step out and know your true potential. Sure. What are you reading now? I am reading Small Fry. That is written by Steve Jobs' daughter. Interesting. Yeah, because a lot of people focus on the man who is Steve Jobs mm -hmm. because he is the icon. And again, people fantasize about his life and his success and how he innovated the world and how we communicate and technology. But what I found interesting was how did it affect his life okay. and the persons who became a part of his family? Was life very good for them? Or is it just a perception that we have of the man in the space? So I think it's important to dive a little bit deeper. So I'm reading Small Fry right now. Okay. Okay. I'm very weird. I'm all over the place, but I'm very intentional. Be very intentional. <laughs> okay, so the person who I referred to earlier as Roynes is actually Brady. Oh, hi, Brady. Yes, so Brady says he resides in Panama. Okay, His fantastic. Bueno, mucho gusto conocerte, Brady. Okay. All right, so Andrew is like, where do I go from here? Like, what am I gonna ask? <laughs> so, right, so no, I have an idea of what I want to ask, you know, but I want to just encourage persons to continue to send questions. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. um, we do appreciate um, the comments, and we also um, would love if you would send questions. Now, we may not be able to answer all the all questions, mm -hmm. no, but we'll get to them. Mm -hmm. All right, so I want to know, find out why you decided to leave your nine to five job mm -hmm. um, to become a full-time entrepreneur media services specialist? I think, I think I decided to do it because I realized that I was very good at my job. I think a lot of the times when people stay in their nine to fives is because um, they fear, they fear leaving that stability. They fear that cushiony part that, you know, you have this income that's coming in every month. You don't have to worry on that date. The 25th usually of every month, you're going to get it. And even though people are using your services outside, you don't really know for sure, for certain, if you leave this job that you know is, a, is, is stability, if you, your service, your value, your skill will be able to sustain you. That's a scary thought, especially when you're not young and you're not on your, you know, you're not living by yourself, but you have dependents. So when you have dependents, you now you start to look at things 
a lot more differently than somebody who just come out of school and probably just trying to explore. Mm -hmm. But I think when I realized that I was passionate about it and that people um, saw the skill that they were willing to pay for, that my skill was something that was needed in the market and that I was in fact great at it. If those four things overlap, which is a Venn diagram, if those four things overlap, you love something, you're good at it, people will pay you for it, and there's a need for it in the market. If you can ask yourself that question and answer is yes, in that little over, that place where you intersect, that's called purpose. I'm trying to remember the name. Yeah, it's a, Venn, it's a Venn diagram. Yes. I think it's actually from some Japanese um, philosophy. But in that little section there, that's called your purpose. And when I realized that I could totally sustain, I took the risk. Okay, so we have a question. We have a question from Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Ashley says, good afternoon, Terry. Hi, Ashley. Good when afternoon. When are you going to write a book? <sighs> I get asked this question. I get asked, when am I starting my podcast? When am I writing the book? And when am I starting my own show? So... I will tell you soon. No, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a, a, a good answer. Um, I will write that book. I don't know what I'll write that book about as yet because people say that I touch a lot of different areas for different people. So I think that's going to take me stepping back and really trying to figure out what I want my messaging to be. And okay. even if starting my show is something I want to do, what is already in the space and probably what do what where would people like to see me? So I guess my question back to Ashley or to anyone watching is, if I were to write a book, what would you want to read? Or if I were to start a talk show, what is it that you would want? Or what is it that you think is lacking in the space that you think I could offer value? If you tell me this and you give me this homework, then I will have a better idea of what the market might possibly want. Okay. I'm always open for feedback, always. Okay. Oh, this is so sweet. Diana Millwood. Hi, Diana. My nine-year-old son is asking, what's your favorite book? Wow! What's his name? What's your son's I, name, I love, I love kids. I love children. Um, oof, this is so hard. My favorite book right now as an adult is Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. And I think it's because that book touches everything, but it also shows you how he was able to become a multi-potentialite as a black man in Africa, born to two parents that were never supposed to get together because of their color and their class and how he was able to find success. Amazing story. But if I'm going to look at the book that I loved as a child that I still use today, it's called Aesop's Fables. I think that's the name of it. And there were short stories that always gave you the moral of the story, which I think every child should have this book. So you learned about the dog with the bone, the boy who cried wolf, mm -hmm. the, 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 the fox and the grapes. Those were little stories that we learned where you always learned a lesson. And I find that I look back at that book that I had when I was maybe six or seven, and all of those lessons still ring true to this day. So I think it was called Aesop's, A-E-S-O-P, apostrophe s fables okay he would love that book the nine-year-old would love that book okay diana's son's name is marquan did i get marquan thank you so very much for watching and for posing your question that's very brave of you and you just did what a lot of adults are afraid of doing so kudos to you and all the best when you go back to school okay we have some more comments coming in more there. comments yes ma'am I'm sure you're Somebody said I should write a motivational book. How do you springboard into career you have never um, practiced? By, by, by having an open mind, by jumping in, um, taking criticism, learning on the job, being observant, not being afraid to ask questions, not being afraid to ask for help and going out and at least trying it. At least try it. What holds us back is the fear of failing. And when you get over that, you realize that everybody fails in life. It just matters. Of, it, the, what really is important is how you decide to bounce back, really. That's true. Purpose Driven Bembridge. Thanks for... Love that name, Purpose Driven. Yes, Lovely. love it. Thanks for tuning in. I think this is a female. 
<laughs> well, if not, let's just uh-huh. stick to Purpose Driven Bembridge says, this girl is my inspiration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Purpose Driven. And with a name like Purpose Driven, you're also speaking it over your life, which I think is very cool. A lot of times, even from a branding perspective, I see people write me messages, they send me messages, and I'm taken aback by their name, their profile name, and I'll ask them, you know, why would you use a, a, a name that is negative or that speaks negative in your life on your profile? Like you allow it to define who you are and how people define you. So I've even told people when it comes to the names that you choose and as your online identity, it's also very important for you to choose those names very wisely. So purpose driven, I think that's awesome. Okay. All right, so we're getting a flood of questions. <laughs> flood, a flood. How long is this interview? <laughs> we've gone over. We've gone over. But yes, the producer has a lot. Oh my to... goodness! Okay, the I know when this time. stops, that means we've gone an hour. I know when this live goes down, that means it's been an hour. <laughs> All right, so let's see how quickly we can get through these, military. So Mackenzie. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go to five minutes. Okay, so Mackenzie says, "What else do you think I can do as a firefighter in Jamaica?" Currently doing a bachelor's in business administration, accounts, and finance. Okay, hold on. First of all, this is now finishing. I think it says I have 20, oh. 20 seconds remaining. So let me just say, somebody said all the way from Burgos, Spain, that they're very motivated by what we've been discussing. Okay, thank you very much, guys. The Insta um, Live is going to end shortly. But thank you so very much for tuning in. And I will definitely try to put it on, on loop. Is that is that what it is?